Hello kids, this is Mrs. Butcher and this video is on graphing and writing the equations of absolute value functions. The absolute value parent function is just y equals the absolute value of x and you guys should know that the absolute value means the positive value basically because it's the distance away from zero. So if we were to graph the absolute value of x it would look just like this. Okay, so I'll start with zero. The absolute value of zero is zero. The absolute value of one is one. The absolute value of two is two. So on the right, we have a line with a slope of one. But then the absolute value of negative one is one, there. And negative two gives us two, there, and so on. We get a line on this side with a slope of negative one. So we can write this as a piecewise function We'll say f of x equals, and then we're going to put this bracket, this big bracket, because we're going to write two pieces of this function. And the left piece is the line y equals negative x. And that's for the interval of all x's from negative infinity, from negative infinity, see it's going on negatively that way, up to zero. So you can write that in interval notation or inequality notation. Most often you'll see it as an inequality, so we'll say x is less than 0. Then for this right-hand side, that line is y equals x. And that is for the interval of 0 on up to infinity, which we'll say x is greater than or equal to 0. And I put an equal to on this because one of these has to have an equal. If they were both um, not equal, then there would be an open circle in the middle there. And if they were both equal, then they would overlap and it wouldn't be a function. So you, it doesn't matter which one you pick, but you just have to pick one or the other. So that's called a uh, compound function. However, we don't have to write it like a compound function because we can write it as y equals the absolute value of x. So now let's practice some graphing. And when we do, we're going to refer to our general, general transformation formula. Remember, the A is your vertical stretch or compression. The B is your horizontal stretch or compression. That C is your horizontal, horizontal shift, and the D is your vertical shift. And so the function in this case, the F of, is our parent function, absolute value of x. And you should write these down if you don't remember them, but if you do remember what A, B, C, and D do to your function, then, you know, you don't have to write it again. So here's an example. We're going to graph Y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of X minus 3, and then all plus 5. So if we think about what the transformations are going to be, we know that to my X values, all I'm doing is going right 3. So that means I'm going to add 3 to all my X values. My y's are going to change three different ways. I have a negative here, which reflects it over the x-axis. I have a 2 here, which is going to stretch it by a factor of 2. And then I have a plus 5, which is going to shift it all up 5. So there's a few ways you could graph this. One way you could graph this is to lightly sketch in your parent function and then just do these, um, these things to it. Shift it right three units. Take all your y's and reflect them to the bottom, stretch them by 2, and then shift them up 5. That can be a bit time-consuming, though. You could also just make a table of your parent function, um, x and y. So if we went with negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2, I know all my x's are going to have 3 added to them. So I could make a new side and just write x, um, x plus 3. Oh, I didn't want to move that. x plus 3, sorry. So if I just added 3 to all my x's, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. And then I could make a new y, and my y's I'm going to have to uh, reflect them all over the x's x-axis means I need to multiply them all by a negative and stretch by a factor of 2. So I'm going to multiply all my y's by negative 2 and then add 5. So if I did negative 2 times 2, I'd get negative 4 plus 5 is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 5 is 3. 0 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 5 is 5. 
And then once again, negative two times one is negative two plus five is three, and negative four plus five is one. So then I could plot the green points, and I would have my new function. And another way to do this, once you get used to um, seeing how it repeats the same every time, is just think, okay, your vertex is, is going to move from zero, zero, uh, right three, and up five. So my vertex is now going to be at three, five. So I could just plot that point. And then I know that the slope on the right used to be positive one. And then if you look at whatever's in front of the x, that's going to be the new slope, negative 2. So I could go down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1, and I could draw that line. And then I know that the other side of my absolute value is just a reflection of the right side. Basically, it's got a slope of positive 2 from this point. And so I could sketch that in like that. So either way, I've plotted 1, 1 right here, and 2, 3, 2, 3 and 3, 5, and 4, 3, and 5, 1. Either way you want to do it is great. So let's try another one of these just to be sure we know what we're doing. This time I've stuck a B value in there. And remember, when you have a B value, you have to factor it out. So we'll take the absolute value, and then I'm going to take this 2 with a parenthesis, x plus, and then if I divided 2 out of that 2, it would really be 1. And then minus 3 stays the same. So for this graph, we know that this 2 right here is our horizontal compression. Compression because it's greater than 1. So we'll say we have a horizontal compression by a factor of 2. We know that this plus 1 is our horizontal shift to the left 1 unit and the minus 3 takes it all down 3. So you could take the parent function and do each of these three transformations to it. You could take the x and y chart and make sure that you multiply all your x's by 1 half and then take away 1, because remember we do the opposite with the x, and then take all your y's and subtract 3. Or you could say, well, I know that my vertex is going to go left 1 and down 3. So my vertex is going to go from 0 to 0 to negative 1, negative 3. And then I know the slope is 2. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and so on. And there is going to be your absolute value function. All right, now moving on, we're going to talk about how to write the equation of an absolute value function if I give you the vertex and then some other point that's on it. So what you're going to do is take the general equation, and then when we do this, there's two different cases, because I didn't tell you what a and b are. And because we're multiplying by two things, a and b could be a number of different numbers. So when you solve a problem like this, you will be told to assume either that a equals 1 or assume that b equals 1. So let's try it first by assuming a equals 1. All the numbers they gave us fit into this equation because the vertex negative 3, 5 is going to be our c value because we're going to go left 3 and then our d value because we're going to go up 5. And sometimes you've seen this as h and k instead for your vertex. So I know that c is negative 3 and d is 5. And then if I give you a point, I've given you an x and a y. So I'm going to plug it in with 6 for my y or my g of x. a is 1. b we don't know yet. x is negative 1. Minus negative 3 will be plus 3. And then plus d, so plus 5. So now I have everything filled in except the letter b. So now I can just work some math magic here real quick. Take away 5 from both sides. I get 1 equals the absolute value of b times negative 1 plus 3, which is going to be 1 equals the absolute value of 2b. And so the absolute value of 2b has to be 1, so 2b equals 1, or negative 1, b equals 1 half, or negative 1 half. 
And because our vertex is going to be in quadrant 2, so you look at negative 3, negative 5, and you go, okay, well, that's, I'm sorry, negative 3, 5 is over here. We're, going to go, we're just going to go with the positive value of V, of B. And so now we'll rewrite G of X. I'm going to use blue, sorry. G of X equals, and then A was 1, so I'm not going to write anything, absolute value of B, 1 half, parenthesis X minus C, so X minus negative 3 is X plus 3, and then plus D, so plus 5. And you don't have to multiply that 1 half out. You don't have to distribute it. You're just done. You can put a box around your answer, and you're happy. All right, now this time we're going to find the equation of the same function, but this time we're going to assume that B equals 1. If you recall, um, our vertex was negative 3, 5, so the negative 3 is our C, and the 5 is our D. And then the point negative 1, 6, that would be our x and our y. Same as we did last time. Only this time we're going to take our function, y equals, so 6 equals. And then this time we're going to let a be the thing we find. And we're going to let b just be 1. So 1 times. And then we've got x minus c, so we've got negative 1 minus negative 3. And then plus d. We'll absolute value that, and then plus d, plus 5. So if we do all this work, we have 6 equals, and uh, 3 times negative, or 3 plus negative 1 is 2, and 1 times 2 is 2, so we have a times 2, and then plus 5, so we're going to take away the 5, 1 equals a times 2, divide by 2, a is 1 half. So when we write this one, we're going to say y equals, or f of x equals, or whatever, and then a is one half on the outside, absolute value of x minus c, so x minus negative, so plus 3, plus d, so plus 5. So this one looks a little bit different than the other one that we did because the other one had the one half on the inside and this one has it on the outside. But it, both of those equations will give you um, an absolute value function with a vertex at negative 3, 5 that passes through the point negative 1, 6. So that's the end of this video. You guys have a great evening and I'll see you tomorrow.